All right, hi everybody. So I've shown you now how to do just a normal tension test and a stress relaxation test. So the last test I want to show you how to do is a hysteresis test. So it's a, it's a little bit different setup as well, um, but you basically do the same thing. We're gonna set up a method, then we're gonna run the test. And we're just gonna use this finger of a rubber glove as our example. So I'll start setting up the method. Uh, and so what we're gonna wanna use for this is none of these kind of standard methods work for hysteresis really well. We're gonna use this tension test profiler method. So that's what you're looking for, tension test profiler. Again, we're gonna skip over most of all this information. We're gonna go straight to test control. And we're gonna go to test. Okay, and so this is a little bit different than the previous in that this is a sequence of tests that you perform. And so we could do a lot of different things with this uh, setup, and we could have even done our other tests with this setup. Um, and so you basically look at these different forms and you, you're gonna choose one of them. Um, I, this is obviously a hold right there. Um, the second one is a ramp. The third one is, okay, it's a relative ramp. So in other words, not just an absolute position from like zero to 10 millimeters, but from like where you're starting at it, move to another 10 millimeters. Then we use a waveform ramp. And then finally, uh, there's this auto balance. So you can like zero out uh, your measurements if you wanted to zero out your measurements in the middle of the test. Okay, but what we're going to do is we could technically do two ramps, right? We do one ramp going up and then one ramp going back. But I think it's actually easier in this case when we're doing a hysteresis test, right? We're pulling up and we're going back to just do a cyclic, but we're just doing a single cycle, right? We just wanna do a single triangular, triangular waveform. And so uh, again, we're gonna do the cyclic event. We're going to uh, do it on displacement. We'll set some displacement rate. Uh, again, I've been using 25 for these video so I use 25 again um, and then it wants to know how far to pull right what's in other words what's the max distance you want to do um, our max I don't know I'll go ahead and I'll just pull to 12.5 right so it should take 30 seconds to get there and then it wants to know the min Right, and so you just picture a waveform. We want to go up to 12.5 and then back down to zero, right? So our min is going to be zero, so we don't have to change that. Uh, and then we just want to set it for one cycle, right? We don't want to do it twice. We just want one simple cycle, right? There's not much uh, else that we need to mess with here. Um, this is just sort of, that's what, that's what we want to do. We want this run cycle. Again, you can make some really complex things going on here. You can add um, more things after this one, but that's all we need to do. We set one waveform to do hysteresis. And then we go to end of test. Okay, one of the end of test is it breaks. Another end of test I always want you guys to include is that the force is this then 0.8 Newtons just in case uh, we protect the load cell. And then we set up the rest of the, uh, everything like we did before, right? Like console, if we want to display force in Newtons, right? That's, again, that's just this display up here, but that's fine. We'll display it in Newtons. Um, workspace, again, we want to set our raw data up so that the force is in Newtons. This is, this is the important one, right? It doesn't really matter what's shown on the screen but when it saves it to the raw data, this definitely needs to be in Newtons. And then we go to exports, again, file settings, Whatever, we'll stick this on the desktop again. Uh, we're gonna make sure we export after each test. Don't worry about the results table. We're gonna do, definitely have raw data. I forgot to turn off the report. Okay, and we're pretty much done. Like that was, it's that easy to set up a uh, hysteresis test in this case. So I'm going to save the method. Okay, it wants the file name, which will bring up the keyboard to do. Whatever. I just, I didn't spell that right, but I, I put it in there so I know what it is. 
Okay, so now we're done. I'm going to go back home. And now we're ready to run our test. Okay, here's my weird spelling of hysteresis test. Again, it's going to tell us, make sure you set up the cross-head correctly, which we have. Okay, and we're ready. Again, I'm, I'm already hit the setup, so I hit unlock and it's in the setup. Uh, now I'm just going to make sure I've pulled it just a little bit so that it's just ready to start testing, and then I'm going to zero out our values here. And I'm ready to run the test. So if you remember what's going to happen, it's going to pull to 12.5 millimeters, and then it's going to go back to zero one time. pretty cool. You can see there is a lot of hysteresis in this rubber glove. There's a lot of area between those two curves. Okay, and now we're done, and it will ask us for the file name to save it as. I call it hist1. Okay, and we're pretty much done. So once, then again, you could uh, go ahead and take out your sample, put it in the next sample, run it. Um, but we're done here, so I'll hit home. So say no. Again, we have our data on the desktop where we expect it. Uh, and so just, again, make sure you move that data to uh, Google Drive or someplace where you can access it later. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and delete all the data because you don't wanna, we don't want to clog up um, the whole computer with everybody's old data. All right, so you guys should have a great time testing. That's how you do all the methods. Uh, and it'll be uh, pretty fun to look at and analyze all the data you get.